Saturday, November 14th, around 6.45 a.m., if strict conditions are met, the public will be able to watch the Bay Bridge six-second implosion of this 20-million-pound underwater foundation of the old demolished East Bay span, live on YouTube. Quite frankly, uh, you really won't see much because we're putting a blanket over the top of it. We call it a blast mat, layers of 12 by 12 timber, and underneath that, there's steel planks. On the side, we basically have woven steel cables around the outside, and the whole idea of that is we don't want fly rock. We don't want things going up, uh, up and down. And remember, we're Im imploding it. Most of that energy is going to be inside, not going outside. So the idea of, of somebody expecting a scene where things go in the air, that's, that's not going to happen. You, know, you will hear sound. It, it, there will be some visible things. But quite frankly, my advice to you, if you really want to see this, stay home, watch it on the Internet. If conditions, generally a lack of wildlife in the area, are not met, the implosion time will shift to 1 p.m., but could be held any time in November if Saturday's implosion has to be canceled for some reason. You'll find the live event on YouTube at this address. You can also search for E3 implosion and find the address for this camera vantage directly above the implosion. And another live camera from Yerba Buena Island at this address. This is Pier E3. What it does is it obstructs um, the main uh, primary shipping channel on the east side. The U.S. Coast Guard is also putting pressure on us, and we completely agree and support the Coast Guard. They want this pier out of here because it, it, um, it basically is a marine, uh, marine hazard. So what we're doing for the first time ever on the planet, we're taking proven technologies. You know, you can see it on YouTube, you can see it on the news all the time, and the building next door doesn't even lose any windows. Okay, that is proven technology. Right? Design, deconstruction, implosion. Now what we're doing it is in a sensitive marine environment that we value tremendously. We're also doing it in November where most of the marine um, activity, the fish life, they're not there to be threatened. Okay? We're, also, um, we're also doing this during daylight hours um, so we can watch and make sure marine mammals are not around. We're also not using one big blast. We're using many hundreds of smaller charges weighing from 20 pounds to um, uh, 35 pounds, S specifically uh, located, and we're going to um, release this energy from inside to outside, from bottom to up. You want to make a void and let gravity do its job. Okay, and by having just under 600 different charges, not released all at once, but set off microseconds apart, you don't have one big shock wave. This bubble curtain, produced by up to 16 truck-sized compressors, eight on each adjoining barge, will reduce the underwater shock wave by 80%. The system was successfully used to minimize damage to fish when the Benicia Bridge was built. It would have taken over four years to build a cover dam and remove uh, this pier just uh, with mechanical means. Instead, we're doing this in about six months, and the implosion in itself will be uh, six seconds. Uh, so uh, the risk to the environment uh, will be greatly minimized by employing this technique. BCDC, along with our sibling state environmental agencies and our cousin federal environmental agencies, sat down to listen, prodded, poked, did a lot of work, and basically figured out that the implosion technique would, on the whole, provide substantial environmental benefits compared to the previously agreed to dismantling technique. They weighed the alternatives and decided that the implosion was the better of the two alternatives. It is not perfect. Species will be killed. But According to NIMFS, the National Marine Fisheries Service, Cal Fish and Wildlife, and other environmental experts, there will be fewer, there will be less damage than there would be otherwise. In November, there will be no salmon runs. In November, the herring aren't around, and nesting birds are few and far between. Marine mammals will be discouraged from entering the zone with underwater acoustic devices designed to get them to vacate the implosion zone. Scientists will use noise to get birds to leave the area too. More than 50 monitoring locations will be checking to make sure the area is clear. So Caltrans has developed a comprehensive biological monitoring program and it has many elements. The goal of the monitoring program is to minimize impact to protected species in the bay. 
This includes diving birds, marine mammals, as well as fisheries. The monitoring program includes, in addition to many other items, extensive observations of birds and marine mammals done by highly experienced skilled monitors, many of which who have been working on the project since the inception back in 2001. So we have a lot of experienced folks working on this project. We have hydroacoustics monitoring that'll be happening. So the marine mammal monitoring is pretty extensive. We have a monitoring program for pinnipeds, which would be your seals or your sea lions. And then we also have a monitoring program for cetaceans, which will be your dolphins and porpoises and whales. So you see, we've got the blue triangles, which will be the position of our monitors. We've got them on land. We've got them on structures. We've got them on boats. We have them all over to make sure that we have the best vantage point to be able to see if we have any species coming into those exclusion zones. So we have additional monitors set out at these further locations. People will not be allowed near the zone either. The bike path will be closed. The highway patrol will hold traffic for 15 minutes on the Bay Bridge before the implosion. BART trains will be held outside the underwater Transbay tube awaiting the six second implosion. So following the implosion, we expect the plume that's created a kind of cloud of material sediment that's stirred up off the bottom to move first to the north and elongate. So it'll be like this lobe here. And then when the current reverses, it'll move to the south and get about this far down and it'll be a little bit more condensed. I think it would be as cloudy in the water as you would see on a really stormy day, okay? It won't last long. Within 50 minutes, it'll be down below 50 turbidity units. And it should be completely back to background within four or five hours. At the Bay Bridge, Mark Jones reporting.